The bubonic plague was the deadliest pandemic in human history, but it affected more than just the biological well-being of the populace. It was also a time of exchanges and encounters between individuals and societies, and was a time of economic, medicinal, religious, and artistic exploration. In the year 541, a man in Pelusium, Egypt, died. He was reported to only have suffered from fever at first, but soon he was unable to think cohesively, and buboes began to appear on his thigh. He began to vomit blood, and much of his skin commenced to rotting and hewing black. He was the first to contract the infamous plague of Justinian. At first, people thought this pestilence to be mere tale, but soon it made its way to Alexandria, or could be easily spread through trading ship. From 541 to 42, the scourge wreaked havoc around the southern European area and the Middle East, wiping out an average of one-fourth of the population wherever it struck. Though the first major outbreak only lasted two years, 25 million people were eradicated during this time, and this was just the beginning. Hundreds of years later, in the 1300s, Europe contained an overabundant, wealthy, and sophisticated populace. In 1347, the Plague of Justinian, now renamed the Black Death, reappeared in Europe through sailors arriving from the Black Sea in the east. After entering Europe once again, one of the first major appearances of the pestilence was in Florence, Italy, a port city full of trade, commerce, and a large population, perfect for the spread of disease. Approximately half of the population in Florence was wiped out by the plague. In Siena, there wasn't enough space to bury the dead, so the corpses of the afflicted were tossed into the pits of the city wall. Giovanni Boccaccio compared the burial methods to a lasagna. One layer of bodies, one layer of dirt. After the outbreak in Florence, the virus spread to other parts of northern Italy and eventually traipsed its way through the main European trade routes to Avignon, France a city of patronage and diplomacy that contained the People's Council and the Pope. Then, the plague invaded the pastoral province of England through Southampton, Plymouth, and Bristol. The scourge wreaked more havoc, wiping out 80% of the population in Jara. There also weren't enough graves at the time to bury the dead, so people started digging huge trenches to dump the afflicted corpses. In the autumn of 1350, the spread of the plague had reached the borders of Europe, and it finally began to wane. Though waves of the bubonic plague would strike again and again throughout the next 300 years, Europe proved resilient, and an epidemic such as this would never be faced again. The Black Plague is a contagion of many symptoms, such as fever, vomit, muscle cramps, and chills. Unfortunately, the symptoms are not limited to these minor liabilities. Andicia also consisted of internal hemorrhaging, lymph gland swelling, and the death of cells in the toes, fingers, lips, and nose. When the cells died in these parts of the body, the dead skin cells turned black, hence the name Black Plague. Transmission of the scourge was usually through dead tissue, coughs, and fleas. Victims died within a week from flooding of the respiratory system by a peculiar poison generated by the heart and lungs. Initially, there was no antidote, and doctors scrambled together to explore the field of medicine. Many remedies were prescribed, among the most popular being to consume lettuce, alternating sleep on the patient's left and right sides to regulate the temperature of liver, and the application of a paste consisting of gum resin, white lilies, and dried human excrement. All of these treatments proved incompetent, and some of the failed apothecaries were executed. Some thought that the sight, or even the mere thought of the plague, would sick it to an individual, and some thought it was an emissarial pandemic from God, and the second coming of the Messiah. People sought salvation from the church, which also proved ineffective. Priests who extracted the last rites from the afflicted also contracted the disease, and more than 60 priests died. Fear of the plague provoked the church to practice many bizarre rituals on the penitents, and brought forth ethnic hatred towards the Jews. 
The Flagellants were a group of Christians who directly challenged the authority of the church and took matters into their own hands, whipping themselves and chanting Christian hymns with the intent of taking the sins of the world upon themselves. These attempts proved more unsuccessful than most, for their actions aided the plague spreading. Many distraught Christians also contributed to murderous purge, slaughtering the Jews in hopes of purifying the earth of non-believers. Massacres of the Jews took place in over a hundred cities in France, Italy, Switzerland, and Germany. The Pope put his hopes of discovering an antidote into an apothecary by the name of Huy de Choliac, who had contracted the disease while attempting to aid the ill. For six weeks, Huy tended to himself by penetrating holes in his bubos, or lymph nodes. Fortunately for Huy, he recovered. Afterwards, Huy attempted to find the way of contraction of the influenza, carrying out autopsies and inspecting the lungs of the afflicted. He learned that it was a disease born of human contact, and suggested to the Pope to flee the afflicted area and purify the air with fire. After the pestilence entered England, many peasants attempted to combat the corrupted air with the sense of thyme, tansy, and wormwood, which also failed. With the death of so many peasants came a shortage of labor, and blue-collar workers began to demand higher wages and lower rent, hence the eventual death of feudalism and birth of capitalism. As the years went by and the plague continued to spread, people had learned to live with and even embrace their deadly circumstances through artistic exploration. An abundance of macabre and morbid paintings, drawings, music, and stories were created with inspiration from the Black Plague. The bubonic plague not only inflicted Europe with death and trepidation, but also caused renovation in many industries and in the psychology of the people.